There she is. There's the baby. I can't believe I've got an RS in my garage. She's a beauty. So hi guys. How are you? Um, I've had the RS for just over a week now, about a week and a half. Um, I've covered nearly 800 miles, um, not far off the 1,000 mile running period that I'm going for. Um, so I've been able to open it up a bit more now, um, go a little bit faster, etc. I'm not going to do any launch controls until 1,000 miles, but um, I think it's about time that I actually introduced this car and gave my initial thoughts on the car with you guys. So what we'll do, we'll go out for a drive shortly and I'll go over some of the features and um, just my initial impressions really with owning the car for just over a week. So has it met my expectations? Um, what are the plans for it in the future? Um, and how do I feel about the car at this moment in time? So we'll cover all that. Before we do move on, I just want to apologize for my last the collection video. It was a little bit, uh, a little bit weird. Um, basically what happened was, when I uploaded it to YouTube, it gave me the option to stabilize it. So I put that stabilization mode on and it seemed to ruin the video, so I won't be I won't be doing that again. So I apologise for that. So anyway, let's uh, let's fire up and go for a drive. Oh, God, grip on this. So yeah, 
yeah, the grip is insane. And I've actually gone out in the wet as well. And to be honest, it's not much different in the wet. It can take a wet road as well as it can take a dry road almost. It's really impressive. I've never driven a four-wheel drive car until I've driven this. So it's the first time for me with a four-wheel drive. And it's just a weird feeling compared to a front-wheel drive. It's just, you can feel the back end um, bite. You can feel the back end like bite into the road. It's, it's a weird sensation. Um, whereas with a front-wheel drive car, you just get understeer as you try and accelerate out of a corner. Or if you push it too hard into a corner. But no, this, it just works fantastically well. Um, so yeah, as for the power, it's quick, it's quick. The thing I will say is, I, th I don't know if boost is limited in first and second, it, it might be limited. Um, but when you get into third and fourth, that's when you really feel the power. That's when you get the proper sort of, you know, the sort of punch back in the seat kind of feeling. And you feel like you're really progressing. But as everyone says, it is quite a linear power delivery. Um, so it's not like overly dramatic, but you are going fast. It is a fast car. When you look down at the speedo, and you see how fast you're actually going. It is a fast car. So yeah, my, my overall first impressions are very good. So yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. Um, we will pull over in a minute and I'll go through some features of the outside of the car, but just to remind you of specs, I've got the forged alloys, the blue painted calipers, um, I've got the Lux pack with the, the tinted um, rear windows, uh, the folding wing mirrors, keyless entry, um, cruise control, I think that's where you give the Lux pack. I've got the upgraded sound system, um, so I've got the, I think it's 10 speakers, Sony sound system with a subwoofer in the boot, which actually sounds pretty good. Um, because this is a, a brand new car, I think it's had the audio update, so with a few tweaks of the stereo, managed to get the car, the sound system sounded pretty good. A nice sort of bass tone to it, um, nothing too over the top. It sounds nice, I'm happy with it. And I'm really, I'm really enjoying the Apple CarPlay as well. Let me just plug your phone in and the screen in the car basically replicates your phone. So you can swipe left to right, you can go on Spotify, select all your playlists and stuff like that. Um, it's really handy. And you can also use Siri as well. So say the command to activate Siri, um, it'll pop up on the screen and then you can just ask it, you know, directions for here and there and it'll come up on the sat nav. So it's really cool, it's really nice to have a modern, quick car um, with all the creature comforts. I kind of regret not getting the heated seats a little bit, but because I've, I've always had heated seats in my car, but it's not a necessity and I'm sure I'll get over it. You get so much attention as well. I've had I've been washing it and I've had people come over to me talking about it. I went out yesterday to play a bit of foot golf and the manager of the place there was asking me about the car. You have people looking at it, um, that are driving along next to you. It's really weird. I'm not used to getting sort of so much attention in a car. I think particularly with the stealth paint as well, because it's quite rare, um, it does get quite a few looks. So um, it's obviously a well-respected car on the road because uh, a lot of people seem to pay a lot of interest in it. So. Whereas it, I think if I was driving a Golf R or an Audi S3, I don't think people would really pay too much attention. Um, whereas you see an RS, and it's like, oh, look, it's an RS. If I see a Golf R, I'm just like, oh, yes, it's a Golf R. But um, it could be a bit biased, you know. I have bought an RS, so, but yeah. Let's go around this roundabout just to uh, have a bit of fun. Love the exit. The best bit is the exit. When you exit a roundabout, it just hooks up and just goes. It is awesome. Another thing I haven't touched upon is the, the quality of the interior of the cabin. Now people are always moaning about how tacky the interiors are of these cars, but I don't think they're that bad at all. Your steering wheel feels nice, all of your touch points are nice. The worst bit in here is probably the fascia around the touchscreen. Um, okay, yeah, it's a bit, if you touch it, it's a little bit hard, possibly a bit cheap, but it looks all right. And 
the end of the day, you don't, you don't go around driving, caressing the plastics of the car, do you? The dashboard's nice and firm. I've got no rattles or anything yet. Um, everything feels well put together. It feels much more solid than my Fiesta did. Um, even the doors are nice and soft. They don't flex when you pull them. They just feel nice. So I think it's quite a... Considering it's not a £60,000 car, I think it's well put together. And it doesn't bother me at all. It wouldn't, it wouldn't put me off this car in the slightest. So those that moan about the interior quality of this car, I think for what you pay, it's pretty good. Fuel-wise, I'm averaging 21.7 at the moment. Um, obviously not the best fuel economy, but... When it gives you a smile like that, I don't really care to be honest. Um, I'm pretty sure I could get it to late 20s, um, maybe early 30s if I was really crawling around, but I bought the car to be driven. Um, I'm not worried about fuel economy. Uh, I run it on V Power, um, so high octane unleaded, super unleaded. You don't really want to be buying a car like this and stick in 95 in it to be honest. Um, it does actually benefit the car if you run a higher octane fuel. I haven't touched drift mode yet. I haven't even been into it. Um, I don't really see the point because there's nowhere to use it. Track mode, I've been in track mode. Um, the car feels good, obviously with the suspension firmed up, it's a bit too much on British roads. But if you turn, if you put it in track mode and turn the suspension to normal, it's quite a nice combination. Um, I don't want to go into too much detail because obviously I want to cover these in future videos. But I run this car 95% of the time in sport mode. I start it up, stick it straight in sport mode, and then I'm off. Then you can cruise around, you know, with a quiet car, no pops and stuff like that. And if you want to floor it to sort of four, four, five thousand revs, you, start, you get the pops and everything's just more responsive. So it's there when you need it, basically. The general ride quality of this car isn't too bad. It's not too bad at all. Um, very similar to the Fiesta ST really and you get used to it very quickly and also with these standard seats that I've spec'd they're really comfy um, I've got no problems with being too high these can actually go lower than what I've already got them um, and I like the look of them I think they look quite nice in here nice bolstering holds you in position um, they're not too extreme I don't think the shell seats are worth the extra money to be honest and people are always moaning they're too high and if you want to get the conversion to lower them you're looking at another 550 quid and it's like how much do you want to spend on a pair of seats these seats are absolutely fine so no regrets there so here's the car Ford Focus RS finished in stealth grey 2.3 litre eco boost 350 brake horsepower the black forged alloys wrapped in the Michelin Pilot Super Sport tyres with the optional blue Brembo calipers. The wheels are optional as well. Um, look much better than the standard wheel. I'm so glad I upgraded those um, in the end. It wouldn't look as special with the standard wheels. We've got the tinted glass from the Lux Pack. Again, blue calipers at the rear. We've got the nice spoiler with the gel inlays from DMB, which I fitted once I got it. So yeah, spoiler looks awesome. Around to the rear, you've got your RS badge, you've got your nice chunky diffuser with your huge exhaust pipes. You've got the F1 style fog light there, which I don't think the US spec cars have. So yeah, very nice, very, very happy with it. Happy with the car. Absolutely loving it at the minute. Coming around to the front, you've got the, the fog lights and then you've got these vents here which um, divert air to the brakes to cool the brakes. You've got the nice chunky front splitter and the front mount intercooler and the famous blanking plate from the Ford Transit. But as you can see, it sits quite low at the front. So I did say to myself before I got the car, I was gonna lower it on 25 mil IVAC springs but I don't think that's going to happen, um, at least for the meantime, because I just want to kind of enjoy it as a standard car, and I think with it being lower, it might cause some issues with speed bumps, etc. So for the minute, it's going to stay standard. Um, same for the power. 
power wise it's going to stay standard as well at least for a year and then possibly the Mountune FPM 375 upgrade um, we'll see how we go I need to get used to the, the standard car first so who knows who knows but I'm just glad to have a, I'm just glad to own this car I'm grateful to own this car so I'm just going to enjoy it as it is so once again thanks for tuning in guys if you enjoyed the video it's only a brief kind of introduction to the car just to tell you how I'm getting on with it hopefully it's reassured you guys that are waiting but um yes next few videos we'll have some launch control reactions i'm going to film myself doing a launch control for the first time so you guys can see it and see my reaction and yeah we can start to push it a bit more on the back roads and have a bit more fun with it so yeah that's it from me guys so until next time if there's anything else you want me to ask and answer about the car anything else you want to know about the car or any ideas for future videos and please let me know i have got some more stuff coming up featuring myself and neil who had the porsche boxster s he's now got an m3 so we'll be doing some stuff together but until then take care bye